I'm Johnny K, and this is part 20, adjust the lash and install the top of the big block Chevy. Okay, the heads are on and they're torqued. The valve train's in, ready to go. Before I adjust the lash, I gotta take my intake manifold, I gotta set it on the motor, and I gotta make sure that the intake manifold doesn't interfere with the one inch valve cover spacer. Well, I had to massage the intake manifold a little bit. A couple spots it was rubbing. I just used the die grinder. I smoothed it out with my four and a half inch grinder with a sanding disc on it. And so that's all ready to go. Okay, so this is more for you blower guys. With your intake manifold, we need to drill some ports, vacuum ports into the back of our intake manifold. So you need a drill, you need a tap, and you need the fittings. I install three fittings on mine. One is going to go directly to the blower boost slash vacuum gauge. For right now, the other two ports, vacuum ports, those are going to be for the AED blower reference carburetors. And basically what it is, for the street, for a street motor with a blower on it. The blower reference carburetor, basically they jam a tube up into the power valve area, and then from there you run your vacuum hose, but you gotta get vacuum from somewhere and it's gotta be below the blower. So that's why we have to put some ports into the intake manifold. For future use, I, I said I'd put three in there. So one's for the blower boost vacuum gauge, and really one is going to be for the AED carburetors, because I can just put a little T in there to pick up both of them. But the third one is actually going to go to the MSD boost master timing control unit. What this does is the more boost you have, the MSD Boost Timing Master retards the timing to keep your motor from detonation. And it's adjustable. You can set it to start to come on at one pound of boost all the way up to five pounds of boost. So I'll probably set mine at three pounds of boost. And when this unit sees three pounds of boost, anything over that, it's going to start to retard the timing. I've usually just ran about three pounds of boost, so I really didn't need something like this MSD Boost Timing Master. That's the only reason I'm getting it, because I want to run about 10 pounds of boost and I don't want my motor to blow up. But if you're just running three pounds of boost, you don't need it, I'm telling you. I've run three pounds of boost forever, never had a problem. But if you plan on going over that, I would suggest getting one. So now that we got our manifold adjusted, massaged, and we know it fits, now we have to set the lash. And what I like to do, I leave the intake manifold off. That way I can grab a hold of a bigger piece of the push rod and roll it between my fingers and adjust the lash that way.
Okay, when installing the intake manifold, I like to use the Permatex water pump and thermostat sealant just around the four little water ports. When I install the gaskets, I just use the side gaskets of the manifold. I don't use the front seal or the back seal. I just put an extra thick bead of the silicone on there and that works. And I'm just using the ARP intake bolt set, but I'm using a 12 point head. And it seems it's just a little easier to use that smaller head. For you blower guys, you know on your intake manifold, back by the pop-off valve, that's a very tight spot to get into. So I kind of made up my own wrench. I took a 3 8 open end box wrench and I just put a little bend in it. And that makes it easy to get in there. You can get right in there, get that bolt tightened. It's the only bolt that I can't actually put a torque wrench on. So I just take this and then you just put a crescent wrench around this part here and you put a little oomph on it and you can torque it that way. All right, that's my handy dandy tool invention for that one bolt. You notice on the intake manifold, sometimes it's hard to even get a swivel socket in there. So I just took my die grinder, I opened up the manifold just a little bit to make sure I could get a swivel socket in there. I use it for my torque wrench, just a little extender, and that helps so I can get my torque wrench in there in those tight spots. Also, eBay, eBay, they're snap-on. One's a quarter inch drive, one's a three inch drive. Swivel sockets, 12 point head, five bucks, 10 bucks. Snap-on, great tool, eBay, great price. And that really helps to get your bolt started. Torque your intake manifold bolts, torque them to 35 foot-pounds of torque. I'm going to install my thermostat, thermostat housing, and I torque the bolts to 25 foot-pounds of torque. Don't forget to use some ARP thread sealant because you're going into a water jacket area, so use the white stuff. It's an O-ring type thermostat housing, uses a rubber O-ring. I still put just a thin layer of RTV on the housing. I put the O-ring in and I put a thin layer of RTV over the O-ring, just to make sure. I'm using a Edelbrock High volume water pump and when you run a high volume water pump you're supposed to use a high performance thermostat like this one for the new guys you never put a thermostat in there's two sides this side and that side the side with the little dome you want to be able to see that so here's your thermostat your manifold there it is. All right. I run a 180 degree thermostat. Everybody's got an opinion on what thermostat you should use. 180 works for me. All right, so remember, you have a high volume water pump. You need a high performance thermostat to work with that high volume water pump. Okay, now I can hook up the oil pressure gauge line and install a water temperature probe for the water temperature gauge. I put some ARP thread sealant around the water temperature probe threads before I put it into the intake manifold. Just to point out, this is a billet specialties Alton Air bracket. It's just a pretty trick bracket. Um, looks great, simple to use. Two bolt locations right to the head. 
And then this bolt here is how you adjust the tension on the alternator. Awesome bracket, billet specialties. Get one. All right, pulley, water pump pulley for a short water pump pulley with the little bullet nose. Also billet specialties. They just make really awesome aluminum products. Um, they make steering wheels, rims. So their products are awesome. I think everybody should have at least one billet specialty product on their vehicle. High quality product, uh, great service, great people. Okay, now that the valve lash is set, we install our intake, it's good to go. Now it's time to prime the oil pump. There's a couple different oil pump primer shafts that you can use. One is like this, okay? And the other one, as you can see, <clears throat> has a bushing on it. This bushing represents the distributor shaft. If you just use this type of shaft, you're still circulating the oil on the lower end, but it doesn't come up to the push rods. So if you use this, which has a little bushing that simulates a distributor shaft, which forces oil up to your push rod. So I just wanted to point that out. Then they make an adjustable, depending on your manifold, kind of a step, like a step bit, so it properly fits in your manifold where your distributor goes. That way your shaft's not wobbling all over. All right, that's my message for you. What I use to spin the oil pump primer drive shaft is a Milwaukee 90 degree half inch drill motor. Cool thing about this is the 90 degree head swivels. As you know on some cars, the firewall interferes and you can't get a regular drill motor in there because the firewall hits it. So what do you use? Ah, you need a 90 degree angle drill. So this thing works awesome. I got mine off Craigslist, $70, that's cheap. Once you see the needle move on the oil pressure gauge, come up to pressure, spin it for a minute, and then after a minute, go ahead and rotate your assembly. about 180 degrees. I circulated the oil for about another minute. Go ahead and rotate your assembly, crank over your motor, and then I hit the drill and uh, spun the oil pump for about another minute. And that way I know everything is primed. I got 60 pounds of oil pressure, and it took about 20 minutes to get the oil all the way up through the push rods onto the rockers. It took a long time. The drill didn't have enough power to spin the oil pump fast enough to get oil to the very front rockers on cylinder number one and cylinder number two to the front of the motor. Talk spark plugs. I like to use Autolite spark plugs. That's just me. On a stock 1974 big block Chevy 454 motor, it calls for the Autolite number 26. I like to use on a high performance engine a spark plug that is two ranges colder than stock. There's a big debate about it. Figure it out for yourself, but that's what I use. So I will use an Autolite number 24 because it's two ranges colder than the stock spark plug. And then also it says that spark plug should be gapped at 35 thousandths. So that's what I gap, gap it at. Some people say, ah, oh, they come pre-gapped from the factory, you don't have to gap them. Throughout this whole video series, double check Verify, that's what I harp on. Double check yourself. Verify it. Don't take anybody's word for it. Verify it yourself, then you know. 
And uh, what I do is I put just thin to the wind, a little never sees on the threads of the spark plug. I install them and I torque those to 15 foot pounds of torque. One more thing I add to my oil is not nice, but nice. Freaking, okay. You don't have to do it, I do it.